I'm Dick Reeves. I've been in Huntsville since the late 1960s working on technology projects here during that time. So Vicki's right, I do have a lot of experience in this place. It's a marvelous place. I came from a large city elsewhere in the country and I can tell you I'm very happy to be from that place, but here in Huntsville. All kinds of opportunities here in Huntsville. They pop up new all the time. If you have your eyes open, you can see those and take advantage of them. And it's really great to see people show up here who have been doing that. I'm going to take a few minutes here and talk about my latest project, the Foundry Huntsville, which is a software app studio. Now what's a studio? A studio is a place you bring something to that you want to transform into something different. And the Foundry transforms ideas into commercial products in the market. And we concentrate on software apps particularly for that. The numbers on software apps are amazing. The growth rate is still very high, even though it has tapered off a bit. You know that. The average American has 27 apps that they use in a month. I have 150 on my phone. I'll bet you have a similar number. So there's lots of opportunity. And most of these apps come from people who experience some kind of pain in their life, some unsatisfactory situation where they figure that it can be fixed with some piece of software of some sort. And the problem is very few of those ideas ever get into the market because they're usually in the hands of someone not in a position to take any action on it. They work at Boeing. The wife is not going to let them leave that nice job to do a startup, not if he wants to stay married. <laughs> so. Uh, software app companies also are very attractive in the uh, mergers and acquisitions market today. Uh, something really novel and new is very interesting to another company if it's generating a few million dollars in revenue from users who are benefiting from its use and paying some kind of a subscription fee each year or month to use it. These are where the opportunities are. You've seen all of these, the Internet of Things, healthcare, that's where we're operating right now, big data access, mobile access, sharing economy, uh, on-demand economy, and so on. The pain here in Huntsville is we have over a thousand software developers. We don't really know this number very well. I'll bet it's much more than that, actually, who, uh, who come up with ideas all the time, and they sit on the shelf and never go anywhere. I experienced this downtown at the Vibe about a year and a half ago on Hack Saturday, where about a dozen folks would come for Saturday mornings to have a discussion about app ideas they had. Not a one of them ever went anywhere in the year that I worked with those guys. None of them had the ability to take any action on it. It's really a shame. It's awful. And the concept for the foundry came out of that. Here's our team. Myself, I've been in the software and computer business here for 45 years. Uh, seen it from the beginning to the end. I'm the business guy, the gray-haired business guy. Chris Beeman is uh, right out here, actually, uh, and uh, is uh, my partner in this. Chris is the Pied Piper of the millennial generation here in Huntsville today. He knows them all, and it is the millennials that have the creative energy, most of all, to do these kinds of things. They really do. And the Foundry is a gathering place for them where we can uh, supply them with all the missing ingredients. Oh, and then uh, I, I forgot uh, Bob Locklear at the bottom. Bob, again, a longtime Huntsvillian. He's been busy, busy in the mergers and acquisitions business in Huntsville for a long time at places like Phoenix Microsystems, Adtran, and so on. I uh, spent 10 years in Austin as a venture capitalist, and he is our mergers and acquisitions guy. We're downtown in the AL.com building on the square. That's where co-working night happens every Wednesday night, and that's where the millennials come together to learn something about some new topic. And then about 8 o'clock or 8.30, the headsets come out, the laptops open up, and they work till 11 or 12. Our operational method is this. We listen to all people with ideas very carefully. Werner von Braun said he had learned to use the word impossible extremely carefully. 
and you have to listen carefully to people with an idea. They think it's really great. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. They always do. But you have to listen long enough to figure out where the real value is. Is it practical? Will people buy it? And so on. And that's what, that's what we do at the foundry. We start companies every four to six months. And the original management team is myself and Chris. We work ourselves out of a job over about six months as we hire the other members of the team. We raise capital for the company. We get them started down in our facility. And then we spin them out after eight or nine months as an independently standing company, ready to go. Usually with a product by that time, because software apps are very quick. Average cost of generating one, 171,000. We raised 220,000 for our first project. And, uh, and they happen in about four to five or six months to the point of having a minimally viable product that you can put in front of a, cu of a customer and find out how well they're going to receive it, how it's going to do in the market. We uh, cultivate the millennial app developer community to build teams of five or six people to do these projects. And then we provide a millennial friendly environment. Think Google with lunch. Think Curse who provides that kind of environment here in Huntsville for their development teams because you have to keep these folks happy or they'll go find some el someplace else to be. We provide all of these services. It's a very long list, but it's just a, a complete laundry list from A to Z of all the things that you need to take an idea and turn it into reality in the market. Here are the criteria that we use. The best thing is taking a proven product into a new vertical market segment. The technical work's been done. Now you just have to position it differently for a new market. We need to see the potential of some revenue that will come from this, usually a subscription model. I'll talk about a great one here in just a moment. <coughs> they need to be scalable to five or $10 million in revenue over the next uh, three, four, five years. That's the point at which it becomes interesting to an acquirer so that we can convert the value that we have created in this company into money and wealth in, in new wealth in people's pockets here in Huntsville. Uh, we need to be able to get the domain expertise that's necessary to do this. So we are probably not going to take on a, um, a new nuclear energy uh, type of thing. We don't have any experience there whatsoever. But in healthcare, IT, and other places like that, we have lots here in Huntsville, and, and we know where they are. And then finally, uh, we also have to be able to get the market and sales, marketing and sales talent necessary to take this thing into the market successfully. Huntsville is not strong in that area yet. And we hope to build it a lot here over the next year. And then finally, uh, we need to be able to get early market adoption by customers information about whether they're going to adopt it or not. The nice thing about software is it happens quickly and it fails quickly if it's going to fail. So we don't send good money after bad. And then finally, uh, a favorable competitive situation. And by favorable, I usually mean there are active competitors that are financially successful from whom you can steal some market share. Okay? If there are no competitors in the market, it's probably not a good idea. Okay, our first project is uh, a physician, a spine surgeon. He actually worked on me. He also has a minor in computer science, which is handy. He had a problem with his patients. They weren't following his instructions after he discharged them from the hospital. They get a stack of paper this thick. Nobody reads it. It's full of internally contradictory information. It's just checking a box on a legally required list. But the problem is, if his patients don't follow his instructions, they sometimes fail to take medication or other uh, do exercises and so on, and they end up back in the hospital. And the way the insurance is today, he gets to pay the bill, not the insurance company, if they're readmitted within 90 days. So he put together a software app that delivers his instructions to the patient day by day, hour by hour, graphically on their tablet or smartphone. And as they leave the hospital, he texts a web address to them and a password, and they're off. He's been using it for nine months in his own practice. It's reduced the telephone call traffic into his practice by about 10% and appears, we don't have enough data yet, to be reducing the number of readmissions of patients. Shows all sorts of things. 
Um, here are some examples of the screens that appear on his app. You'll notice that uh, in the upper right hand corner, some pictures of a woman doing exercises because she's had cervical neck surgery. Uh, this, this product uh, has extremely wide application. There are a hundred million surgical procedures done in the U.S. every year. Every single one of them is a candidate for this. It will monetize by a subscription to the practice who can expect to recoup the cost of this many, many, many times over through better care, better outcomes for their patients, and therefore less expense for the practice. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for ideas that fit our model, as I've described it to you. We're looking for developers with design and implementation skills. Some of these apps will be browser-based, the one I just told you about is. Others will be platform-based, Android, iOS, and so on. Then we're looking for marketing and salespeople that we can call on to build these companies, and finally, investors. So, that's it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.